Okay, in this video we're going to talk about number 6 on the 2016 Calc BC exam, uh, and it's the series question, which we're probably looking forward to. Um, so we're given uh, quite a bit of information, uh, so let's see. So we're told that f of 1 is 1, f prime of 1 is negative 1 half, and the nth derivatives, uh, I cut it off for n greater than or equal to 2, at x equals 1 are given by this formula. And in part A, we want to write the first four non-zero terms and the general term of the Taylor series for f at x equals 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table so that I can kind of organize all my derivatives. And I need uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. I could need more if some of these are 0 because I need non-zero terms, but I don't think they're going to be. Um, I can fill in f. Uh, the zeroth derivative is just the function, so that's 1. Uh, the first derivative is given as negative 1 half. And now I need to start calculating them. So I'm going to take 1, uh, no I'm not, I'm going to take 2 and plug it into this formula. So f prime, uh, f double prime, I'm sorry, of 1 is negative 1 squared, 2 minus 1 factorial over 2 squared, which all simplifies down to 1 fourth. I'm going to do the same thing for um, the third derivative. So the third derivative at 1, I'm replacing every n that I see with 3. So negative 1 cubed, 3 minus 1 factorial over 2 cubed, um, and this all simplifies down to uh, negative one-fourth. Okay, so I have uh, four non-zero derivatives, which means I can get four non-zero terms. So let's uh, start writing this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out like the full way through, nth derivative, x minus one to the n over n factorial, and then I'll simplify it, because it turns out we use this quite a bit. So it's um, the zeroth derivative, x minus one to the zero over zero factorial, plus the first derivative, x minus one to the first over one factorial, it's a lot of writing, but I think it's worth it, plus the second derivative, um, x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial, plus the third derivative, x minus 1 cubed over 3 factorial, you go plus dot dot dot, because I need the general term, plus the nth derivative, and then x minus 1 to the n all over n factorial, technically a plus dot 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 again. Okay, so we've got that, and now I'm going to simplify this a little bit, or actually a lot. It gives me 1 minus 1 half x minus 1, plus 1 eighth x minus 1 squared, and then minus 1 over 24 x minus 1 cubed, plus dot dot dot. Then the n term uh, simplifies really nicely to negative 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the n, over 2 to the n times n, um, plus dot dot dot. Okay, so that's going to be my answer to part A. Uh, so this, this problem is a lot of work. So I actually need my answer to part A to like think about the rest of the problem, so I'm going to keep copying it. Uh, so we have this. So the next thing is uh, the Taylor series for f about 1 has a radius of 2, and we want to find the interval of convergence. So it has a radius of 2, centered at 1. So let's think about that. It's centered at x equals 1. Um, it has a radius of x equals, uh, not of x equals 2, as a radius of 2. Um, so what I want to do is think about that. So it's going to go uh, 1 minus 2 is less than x is less than 1 plus 2, which really means that uh, the open interval on which this thing converges is negative 1 to 3. But the question is to find the actual interval, so I need to test the endpoints. So I'm looking at negative 1 and 3, and I'm going to try to test those. Uh, so this is a little harder maybe than usual. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write a summation for this. Uh, the 1 doesn't really fit the pattern, but if I, I say that f of x um, is 1 and then plus the sum from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the n over n times 2 to the n, if you look at that for a couple seconds, you'll see that it makes sense. Like when n is 1, I'm generating uh, that minus 1 half, x minus 1. When n is 2, I'm generating 1 eighth x minus 1 squared, and so on. Uh, so this works, and it's going to help me test the endpoints. So f of negative 1, if this thing converges there, will equal this. So I just plugged in negative 1. Um, it gives me this, so I plugged in negative 1 for x, remember. Uh, now I can work on that a little bit to get 1 plus the sum. Uh, I got negative 1 to the n, negative 1 to the n, 2 to the n, because negative 2 to the n can be broken into negative 1 times 2 all to the n, which gives me that. Cancel the 2 to the n's, and then I just end up with uh, 1 plus the sum from 1 to infinity of uh, 1 over n, 
which is uh, the harmonic series, so that definitely diverges. I'm going to do the same thing here with 3, so I'm plugging in 3, and uh, something similar happens, but it's kind of the exact opposite. The 2 to the n's cancel, and I'm left with uh, 1 plus the sum from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over n. That definitely converges, um, and if you need a reason, that's the alternating harmonic series. It's also a convergent uh, alternating series, if you want to like go through that, but that's a famous series, so you're allowed to know it. Uh, so overall, my interval of convergence is going to be negative 1 is not included, 3 is included, so uh, negative 1 to 3 with 3 included. Okay, uh, let's move on to part C. Part C is kind of weird. Uh, it says to, uh, basically, if you plug in 1.2, you get an alternating series that is... Uh, represents f of 1.2, we want the first three non-zero terms to approximate f of 1.2, which is kind of a weird question. I don't know why they made that its own separate question, but anyway, f of 1.2 is approximately literally just going through plugging in 1.2 here to the first three terms. Like that, you can actually stop there, so it's probably safest to just like leave that and move on, but uh, it's tempting to simplify this, so I did. Uh, I got 1 minus 1 tenth and plus 1 over 200, which ultimately simplifies down to 181 over 200. But again, you could have stopped at the thing in the box. It's probably the safest thing to do. That's all that part C is saying. So uh, we're going to move to part D. So part D, uh, show that our approximation from part C is within 0 0.001 of the exact value. Okay, so that sounds like alternating series error. So the terms of the series... Um, alternate. So I like to write this down. They alternate, they decrease in magnitude, which is important, um, and they have a limit of zero. So if those three things are true, um, then the error in using any number of terms is at most the first term that you left off. So it's at most uh, the magnitude of the first term left off, which is good because all we really need to do is find that extra term that we left off, which for me personally is bad because I can't see that function. So I'm actually just going to paste it at the bottom here. Um, okay, so I use the first three. So I'm plugging into that fourth term there, the 1 over 24, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, the error must be less than 1 over 24. 1.2 minus 1 to the third. So 0.2 is 1 fifth. So this is 1 over 24 uh, times 1 fifth to the third. And then that, if you work it out, is 1 over 3,000. And 1 over 3,000 is definitely less than 1 over 1,000, as was desired. So we showed that our estimate was uh, definitely correct within 0.001. That's the entire question. Uh, again, it's kind of a lot of work. Uh, had a lot of parts. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.